Okay, you got your own vlog going on yep. here? Yeah. Vlog going on here. Like, subscribe, and comment. That's right. You and me were so lucky. Guess we're lucky. We're so free. All I know, never lucky. Guess we're lucky. We're so free. Greetings and salutations, everybody. It's I, Jeremy, aka XLJ, the OG, here with Mr. B Row. Welcome to our AEW Double or Nothing Prediction Show. And boy, oh boy, is this card loaded. Once again, AEW has just freaking stacked a huge deck of cards because, no pun intended, because it's Double or Nothing. See what I did there? <laughs> anyway, this freaking card is insane. Like, 13 matches overall we're talking about. Uh, and 12 of them are advertised for the pay-per-view, so... This is gonna be special. You're getting your money's worth. Yeah, you're getting your money's worth and then some. So we're gonna break it down for you. We're gonna talk about and give our predictions, what our thoughts, what we think is gonna happen. So, first and foremost, how excited are you for Double or Nothing? Pretty darn freaking excited. I have to be honest. I was, like, going into this, I, I was excited, but I wasn't nearly as excited as I was after Dynamite from this past Wednesday. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, I, I will say I, that. I would, I, would, I would agree with it. I would I would say, like, I was more excited about Revolution, mm -hmm. but then I would say this Dynamite this past week got me, like, as excited. Like, yeah, this yeah, is a freaking so. ridiculous card. So let's get right into it. And let's first, of course, as we always do, we gotta talk about the buy-in. Yes. Oh, boy. This buy-in match. Ooh, we are gonna get... Smart Mark Sterling, along with his client Tony Nice, in a tag team action against Hook and Dan Housen, or Hook Housen, Hook Housen, if you will. So this is this is interesting. First time Hook and Dan Housen have been together as a tag team. Yes. Um, yes, indeed. I'm hoping we get like the first actual in ring action of. Dan Dan Housen. Housen. I am too because I was a little pissed about the whole like his debut against Tony Nese and Tony Nese just squashed him. I right. understand the purposes of it, but still, right. I want to see Nese and Dan Housen. Very nice, very evil Dan Housen. My prediction if Dan Housen can go, Dan Housen is the one that gets the pin. I hope we see some teeth. You have yet to see that. I have not seen yeah, that. Yeah, some of, some of his crazy, wacky, kooky gimmicks, if you will. Um, I, I'm in a, so, so you're saying Dan Housen and, and Hook pick up the win? Oh, most definitely. Most, most definitely. Yeah, it's not going to be a freaking scientific masterpiece, but I think it'll be a fun match nonetheless. It will, yeah. It's a good way to start the show, too, because that crowd's going to be super hot. Yeah. Especially for Dan be, Housen and Hook. Hook Housen! Hook, Hook Housen! Housen. Yeah, you yeah. might as well go ahead and print the shirts off, which they may have already done for Pro Wrestling Tees. But yeah. Oh, yeah, they already have them. Of course, of course yeah. they do. So my prediction, I agree. I think Hook and Dan Housen pick up the win here. Yes. It's not going to be a classic, but it'll be a nice little way to start the show off. So let's get right into the pay-per-view. Like I say, this pay-per-view is loaded with 12 matches. Uh, one of the matches we'll be seeing on Double or Nothing is a match uh, we actually... Probably would have seen uh, the last pay-per-view, uh, Revolution. However, Ray Phoenix was injured, and that is the matchup, the trios matchup between the Death Triangle and House of Black. So this one's been building for a while. Yep. Um, been marinating, if you want to say. For a long time. How do you feel about the whole Penta going to the dark side stuff? Well, I, I'm okay. Okay, I'm okay with it. Because the way I'm looking at it is like him and Ray Phoenix are kind of like the the yin and the yang. I'm not feeling it. You're not I'm gonna be honest. It? I'm just I don't know. Like th I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, this will be a great trios match just because of in ring action. But uh, we've talked about this before, and I think a lot of people feel this out here. I hope this kind of puts this feud to bed, and House of Black can move on to something bigger and I better. Would, I would agree. I, you know, I love AEW, but I just, I feel like, how do I say this politely? I feel like House of Black has been booked like shit. I, I would agree. I mean, the fact that they were, nothing against him, but the fact that they were feuding with Fuego Del Sol on Rampage. Come on, man. Come on. Come on you can man. do better than that. So I'm really hoping 
Uh, I think this will be a tremendous matchup, nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, like you said, in ring action is in ring action going to be off the on chain. point. Yeah. Uh, I just hope this kind of puts this view behind and House of Black can move on. So obviously, I'm picking House of Black to win this one. Okay. Well, our Revolution Prediction Show, where I said I don't think Death Triangle wins until Ray Phoenix is back. I said that. I, am I allowed two predictions for this show? Or for this one? Okay. Sure. Here's what, here's what I think. Okay. I think Death Triangle wins. Oh, interesting. Okay. Unless. Unless. There is outside interference in House of Black's favor. Who could, who would be that said outside interference? Miss Julia Hart. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I really hope House of Black gets this win because uh, Malachi Black is so much better. It's, it is the main event player who I'm, as far as I'm concerned yeah. with. Let me tell you, let me make a, a bold prediction. You know what I'd love to see after this? Yeah, I think we're on the same wavelength. He needs to go after a belt. That would be cool, but if they're going to feud with anybody, how about they feud with the Blackpool Combat Club? That's a license to print money right there, my friend. Yeah. So... But like I say, uh, so interesting. So you're going with uh, Death Triangle. Death Triangle. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Already starting off here, splitting up. But I want to know that, that I have my one disclaimer. If there's outside interference, that's my prediction. So does that mean you will be right regardless? If, if no, I mean, if House of Black wins and there's no interference, okay. then I was wrong. Fair enough. But if I call, my, if. If I call my shot... Uh, in a just recently added match, uh, we are going to see Darby Allen go one on one with Kyle O'Reilly. And you kind of called this because you were like, man, why is Darby Allen not on the pay per view? Well, he's on the pay per view yeah. now and he's going up against Kyle O'Reilly. There actually is a story here because uh, remember, there a couple weeks ago on Rampage, the undisputed elite took out Sting and the guy that did it was Kyle O'Reilly. And I have to say this, too. As much as I love Red Dragon, I love the past couple of weeks of seeing Kyle O'Reilly in singles action. Yeah. He had a hell of a run in the Own Heart Tournament. Yeah, it's good to see him get a little bit of a singles push because he, yeah. he's just a, he is such a solid, just... In ring off, performer. Yeah. Yeah. As great as Bobby yeah. Fish is, and as great yeah. as those guys are together, still, yeah. it's great to see Kyle O'Reilly one-on-one. -on -one. But yeah, his style against Darby Allen's style, and keep in mind, no Sting, because Sting is currently injured and is not going to be in Vegas. So Darby's going to have to go this one alone, whereas Kyle O'Reilly does have his tag team partner as well as the rest of the Undisputed League yeah, yeah. on standby, so who knows? Yeah. Uh, ultimately, though, as good as Kyle O'Reilly is, I think the guts and determination of Darby Allen will prevail. I'm going to say Darby Allen wins this one. I will say Darby Allen as well. Um, I will say this though: who needs it? Who needs it more? I think Kyle O'Reilly needs it more. I see. I disagree with that. I think Darby disagree. Allen needs it because Dar remember Darby lost in the first round of the, yeah. the Owen Hart tournament to Jeff Hardy. Yeah, I just I, um, I don't see Darby losing. So I don't either. So I think Darby's going to have this one in the back. Now up next, let's talk about. Probably maybe one of the biggest feuds going into Double or Nothing. And what a road it was to get there for the big man himself. But we are finally going to see Wardlow one-on-one -on -one with MJF. Are we going to see a Powerbomb Symphony in this match? Yeah. I think so. I definitely think so. So will the War Dog be able to finally put MJF to bed? Of course, on paper, I think this is a no-brainer. But you know MJF... Yeah. And he is a skilled in-ring master of the mat, if you will. Mm -hmm. He can back up what his talk is. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, I what's been really refreshing to see on AEW television here these past couple months is the rise of Wardlow. Mm -hmm. Like, taking, stripping stuff away from him and him just coming out and just beating the fuck out of everybody. Most uh, definitely. And the, uh, the, I loved the where he took all the lashes. And it was just like it was nothing. Yeah, and then that steel cage match we just saw with Sean Spears. I love him climbing up to the top. Yeah, I mean, he got up there quick. Oh yeah, 
And let's talk about, like, some of the matches he had, man. Like, what about that match he had against uh, Lance Archer? That was amazing. Lance Archer. The match against W. Morrissey. Yeah. Like, just right. all of the bullshit that he has went through yeah. just to get to MJF. So, I think it's going to be a fun match, a very exciting match. People are clamoring to see it. Now, remember, the stipulation is, is if Wardlow does not win this match, then he cannot get a contract with AEW and would be regulated back to MJF's bodyguard. So that being said, who do you think is going to win? Warlow. You think so? I think so. I'm going to go against the grain on this one. I think MJF's going to win. Because I think this is going to kind of carry on for several more months. You do? I do. I mean, honestly, I think I'm listening to my heart, and I kind of want this just to be a squash match. Hmm. I do think Wardlow will come very, will pretty much have it in the bag, but yeah. there'll be some tomfoolery. There'll be something that comes up. Uh, and I just think MJF, he's going to prevail. As I don't think we are done seeing this rivalry between MJF and Wardlow. I think it's just beginning. And a dream tag team matchup will happen at Double or Nothing. We are going to get to see the Hardys. And it's the Hardys, not the Hardy Boys. We can't say that because we'll get sued. <laughs> Against the Young Bucks. Bucks. Now, granted, these teams have met before in the past, but never at this big of a scale yes. before. So this should be interesting. The build has been fun. Yeah. Uh, and especially for those of you who watch Being the Elite Definitely. out there, Definitely. there's been yep. some fun stuff on there. But I have to say... I absolutely was like, the best thing for me was Rampage this past Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> where they came out yep. dressed as the Hardys, and they also had Gangrel with them. If you remember years ago, the Hardys was the new group with Gangrel. But the best part of that whole segment was Brandon Cutler dressed as Lita, even having the thong. Oh, my God. Which Brandon Cutler and Thong should not be in the same set. No, but that's <laughs> neither here nor there. But I freaking I, I, I marked out, man. That was hilarious. Um, but yeah, man, this is one of those matches like very similar styles. Uh, you know, you got the. It's kind of like a lot of people have uh, compared the Young Bucks to uh, the Hardy Boys over the years. You're nothing more than Hardy Boys cosplayer. Yeah. So, this is definitely a dream tag team match for sure. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun tag match. Uh, I wouldn't even be surprised, too, if this opens the pay-per-view. What a yeah. way to start it, right? With the, yeah. With the tag. That'd be a good this, one. Yeah. yeah. So, who's going to win, though? Okay. I know I'm wearing a heart, hearty shirt, but I do think the Young Bucks are going to win. Yeah, I agree. I think the Young Bucks will prevail, but... Um, I mean, I could see it going either way, really. It know? could, it could. But I think there'll be some tomfoolery involved in this one as well, I'm sure, of some sorts. Um, but I think, I'm going to go ahead and say, I think this may just be the beginning for these teams. I think you'll see them meet. Yeah, it could, it could. In uh, some more showdowns down the line, and possibly for the tag team championship. But yeah. This should be a fun tag team match, nonetheless. Yeah. I love tag team wrestling, so I'm very excited for this one. And I picked the Bucks, but I honestly, I could care less who wins. Yeah, I yeah. think we're all yeah. winners yeah. with what's going to happen yep. in that matchup. Now, from two great storylines to the biggest clusterfuck storyline on this show, we're going to talk about an intergender trios match between your TNT champion Scorpio Sky, along with his tag team partner, all ego Ethan Page, the man of the year, teaming up with Page Fansant from American Top Team to go against the much-loved Sammy Guevara with his girlfriend Ty Conti and Kasarian. What the actual fuck? Like, I don't... I'm so confused... Yeah. I've been watching this stuff for 30 years, yeah. and this may be one of the most confusing storylines I've seen. Like, who the hell's the heel? Who's the baby face? Yeah, like, um, I've only been watching wrestling for a year. Like, there's Not even that, really. Yeah, there's elements I like of it, right? There's, like, the 
Kazarian Scorpio Sky thing. Like that, that's cool. I, I like, like that part of it. I would have preferred much more, even though they already did it on Rampage, but just a Kazarian Scorpio Sky one on one yeah. matchup. Like why in the absolute fuck is is Kazarian with Sammy Guevara? I mean, they've kind of touched on it. Like he's just there, just out of to get back at Sky and the rest of the men of the yeah. year. But still, it's just like, what the fuck, man? And like, and I feel like Sammy right now in AEW, and this is saying a lot. Well, let me rephrase that. Sammy and Ty probably have some of the best heel hate going right now. Yeah. Like, and I can tell you this from just seeing Rampage the other night, the reactions that. Oh my gosh, that some of those wrestlers got, they're going to boo the living piss out of Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti. Yeah. And I know you like Sammy. Um, I do. I I, I mean, I, I know. his stuff in ring, is, it is what it is. I'm not the biggest Sammy fan. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I, um, I, like high, I like high flyers, though. Yeah, so. I think he's a little pissy. He just gets on my nerves. I haven't. Like, when he's in there in the ring with the right opponent, like a yeah. Scorpio Sky, it's good, it's great matches, but there's yeah. just, I don't know, there's just stuff about Sammy. And yeah, I his whole stuff like with the, him and Ty. Uh, yeah, I haven't liked that. I mean. I hate that. I, 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 I kind of feel like they thought it was going to get over. Yeah. Yeah, and they're sticking. Yeah, I, God bless them. They're sticking to their guns, but uh, they are gonna boo the shit out of them when they come out. So yeah. <laughs> in the T-Mobile Arena there in Vegas. So I, I guess we gotta pick a winner. I'll tell you one thing. For me, honestly, this is a piss break match. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. I love Ethan Page, as you all know. Yeah, yeah. Good. I I mean, in a sense, I'm glad it's a trio. That's a trio's match because. I was hoping he would get thrown into it somehow. Yeah. Like Yeah, so, there, at least there's that. Yeah. I do feel like that that is looming. See that that's weird too because that you felt like okay, they're gonna break up uh Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky, then they're back together, then I, I don't like I say, this thing has just been all over the damn place and hard to read. But yeah. um yeah, like I say, I guess we gotta pick a winner. Um so the storyline goes that if men of the year win the match, then Sammy or Frankie Kasarian cannot challenge again for the TNT title. You know what? I'm going to poll for men of the year, page fan set, just so they end this shit and they can move on to something better. Because <clears throat> I feel like with Scorpio Sky, I've enjoyed him as champion, but I don't think they've really... He's just been tied up in this bullshit with Sammy and stuff where, like, to truly, like, enjoy his reign, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to see him kind of move on to bigger and better things. And by the way, how do you feel about that new TNT title design? It was pretty dope. It's pretty nice. It's like, pretty in, like in the Laker colors the Laker and stuff. Theme. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, my prediction, I'm going with men of the year. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I hate to say that, which I mean, who just, who's to say he still can't some, how some way that, that Sammy won't get another TNT title shot. But Gotta hope I, not. I do think men of the year. Yeah. Or American Top Team, whatever you want to. Yeah. Whatever you want to. I like, and let me tell you something else. I'm the least out of all this. The one thing I'm looking to forward to the least, Page Fan Sant in the ring. Yeah, me too. I honestly could give two shits. I'm kind of hoping maybe like her and Ty like just stay like outside and yeah. like they're just like fighting the whole time. Yeah. And get some camera shots. I don't know it, if but, she can wrestle. I mean, yeah, she can fight, obviously. Yeah. And I mean, I've seen some of her fights and. Please, for the love of God, don't let her try to cut a promo. Yeah, no shit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Something I have loved that they've done for the past couple of months in AEW is the Owen Hart yes. Cup Tournament. And we're not getting one, but two finals, both a men and a woman's final. So let's talk about those finals. Let's get right into the women's final, who we're going to see Dr. Britt Baker, D.M.D., Go one on one against the Renegade, Ruby Soho. So uh, we and we just found out the other night on Rampage with Ruby be getting the win over Chris Statlander. And we gotta talk about that for a minute. Yeah. That crowd was pissed that Ruby Soho yeah. won. Now I don't think they. It's not that they don't like Ruby Soho. They just were really behind Chris Statlander. Yeah. Um, and I th do you think they felt like? She was like taking some shots at it, like shots at her, like in her injuries and at Chris. Yeah. No, 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 I don't think so. 
But I do think, too, they were more so for uh, Britt yeah. Baker, too, because she cut Britt Baker off. So, yeah. Which is really weird because I was there in Chicago when Ruby debuted, and you would have thought it was like freaking uh, like CM Punk coming out or something. I mean, the crowd went nuts. Midwest versus the West. I was thinking that, yeah, Midwest against the West. So maybe she's just not as loved, or Indiana homegirl is not as loved yeah. on the West Coast. Um, but she did mention, like, what's interesting to me about this matchup is that this is literally a rematch from Grand Slam, from that main event. Remember, where Ruby was trying to capture the AEW Women's Championship from the champion at the time, Britt. However, Britt did prevail. She said she had a receipt coming, and it sounds like that receipt's going to be delivered at double or nothing. So, who do you think is going to win the first ever Owen Hart Women's Memorial Cup? Hmm. My heart wants to go with Ruby Soho, but I do feel like, and I do feel like she was probably penciled in for that, but I feel like with that crowd kind of turning yeah. on her, I'm, I'm going to be curious to see the pay-per-view and see like if maybe they do cheer her. Because yeah. like I say, I don't think it was so much so against Ruby, it was just the fact that they wanted Statlander to win. Yeah. So, my heart says Ruby Soho. I gotta listen to my brain. I think you're right. I think Dr. Yeah. Britt Baker is yeah. gonna pick up the win and be the first ever Owen Hart Cup yeah. tournament winner. But that's not the only tournament final. This one, I think, in the men's final could steal the freaking show. It's a unique matchup. And to my knowledge, I don't believe these two have ever met in a one on one I scenario. Don't think they, have. they may have, but it, it wasn't like in mainstream. So yeah. I know they never met when they were in NXT. Mm -hmm. They never met, uh, I don't believe, they never met in Ring of Honor because it's different eras. But we are talking about your Ring of Honor World Television Champion Samoa Joe going one on one against Adam Cole, baby. This should be a fun one. You talk about contrast of styles, where Joe is gonna kill you, and the very flamboyant, if you will, Adam Cole with his all about the boom, baby. That's right. So I think this will be a great physical matchup. Uh, Adam Cole is gonna have to come with a plethora and, yep. of super kicks just to keep Joe down. No kidding. No. I think the real question is: Are we gonna see Jay Lethal? And that crew get involved oh, in this final. You know, okay. I think it's a possibility. I hope not. Yeah. I, I feel like for the integrity of the tournament, I really feel like it should just be straight up one on one. Yeah. Um, if it's after match, I mean, I don't give too crap. Yeah, that and that could happen. Um, it's going to be like I say, a physical matchup. I think it could steal the show. Um, but as much as I'd love to see the Samoan win it, I do think. Mr. Adam Cole, baby, will be your Owen Hart men's tournament winner. I would completely agree with you, and that therefore puts... There we go. This is what I was thinking, too. <laughs> Owen Hart tournament winners in the same household. There you go. And also on Double or Nothing, we have not one, not two, not three, but four championship matches. Holy cow! I know. Now, for, up first is the TBS title. As you will see, champion Jake Cargill defend it against your girl, your homie, from the Dark Order, Anna, Anna J. How do you feel about this one? Because you know my thoughts. Yeah. I, last pay-per-view, I went with my heart and not my brain. And I said that Ty Conti was going to beat her. I am not going to make the same mistake. Let's call a spade a spade. Not only that, but a lot of times in our talks, you have mentioned that you feel like Jay Cargill is going to get beat at some point. I, I, happened to I really want her to get beat. You really do, but you know what you need to do? You need to cut the shit because Jay Cargill and the baddies is going to reign supreme. Jay Cargill's winning this matchup. Yes. I... Nothing against Anna Jay, but I... I just feel like this match was just kind of thrown on there, and I feel like there is much more, a better matchup you could have seen. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, they have. Already, huh? They've already had. No, I'm not talking about them. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because this is, to me, I'm sorry, but this is another kind of, I got to go to the potty. 
I don't think it's gonna. Maybe it's gonna be good. Who knows? I hope it's good. Probably squash. Yeah, probably a squash, especially with his main matches that are on this card. But no, what I was gonna say is, answer me this. And to my knowledge, I don't think has Jake Cargill ever went one on one against Chris Statlander. I can't remember. It may have happened, but to me, that is a freaking matchup with like a license to print money. Or put Jake Cargill against Nyla Rose. Dude, yeah. that those are some money type matchups. So maybe they're saving them for on down the road. But I just, like I said, I'm just not was, really feeling this one. Yeah, because Ruby made it to the finals of the TBS and she had faced Chris, so they wouldn't have met. But did Jade face Nyla in that tournament or was Nyla on it in the The only, only time I remember Jade and Nyla being in the ring together was that there was a triple threat match on Rampage with Thunder Rosa. But that wasn't one on one. Yeah. So I don't know. I just feel like there's better matches matchups out there for Jade Cargill. Like I say nothing against Anna J. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be a squash. Jade Cargill's win. I honestly think out of all the matches on this card, this is the most surefire bet. There Jade Cargill's winning this match. Yeah, I, I would. As much as I would love for her to lose, I feel like I completely agree with you. So Yeah. And come double or nothing at the T-Mobile Arena in Vegas, it is going to be Anarchy in the Arena. As you're going to see the Jericho Appreciation Society go up against the Blackpool Combat Club and Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz. And you, it's this is kind of funny or interesting to see where we went from Revolution to here. Yeah. Because you even kind of said it to yourself. You were kind of already burnt out on the Eddie Kingston, uh, Jericho. Chris Jericho feud there for a minute. Just for, for a minute. minute. And then the wizard appeared. Cause I'm a wizard. <laughs> Which is, I love how Jericho can get about just anything over. And I, when I first, honestly, when I first saw the name Jericho Appreciation Society, I was like, ah, now I'm, I'm into it. Yeah. I'm into it. It's just like Chris Jericho can touch anything and it turns to gold. The wizard thing, I was kind of like, eh, but now I'm like, yeah. I want to be able to sing Judas though. I know, right? But alas, that doesn't happen. And one thing, I just want to talk about briefly with Jericho Appreciation Society. I love how they are parroting the old 96 WWF intro like revolutionizing the face of sports entertainment. Yeah, Because we're going to see sports entertainers up against professional wrestlers. And what two unique styles these teams bring. Yep. But I really enjoyed the Eddie Kingston um, Jericho feud and it's like now he's finally got some backup. But there's some tension on that team, too. I mean, yeah, Moxley and Kingston get along, but Brian Danielson and Eddie Kingston on the same team? Yeah. I don't know. And I think you were talking about tornado tags. This one, to me, is definitely going to be a tornado tag. Oh, this one's going to be all over the place? All over the damn place. The match may start, and nobody may even be in the ring yet. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like it's just going to be like, a camera shot, like, go to the empty ring, and then, like, where the F are they? And then it'll be like, it's already started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's I, gonna be anarchy. It is truly gonna be anarchy. And obviously, at first, uh, it seemed like this was gonna be Stadium Stampede 3, but if you think about it, it makes sense. You gotta really yeah. have that in a football stadium, yeah. and the T-Mobile Mason. arena is not oh, no, near. No, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Moxley did. Yeah. It was like, we're not doing that sports entertainment shit, but yeah. we'll fight you. So this one's going to be chaotic. Uh, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, it, it literally is going to be what it sounds like it is going to be anarchy. But who do you think is going to win it? I do believe that the Blackpool Combat Club huh. and Eddie Kingston, Santana Ortiz will prevail. And I think there'll be a minimum of three fireballs because I'm a wizard. Oh. Fair enough. Um, I feel like, I feel like the Eddie Kingston, Brian Danielson kind of rivalry there is going to kind of get involved in this to a certain degree that I could see it costing them the match. Um, but I don't know. I just think that Blackpool Combat Club, they're just too strong, even with just two of its members right now. Uh, and William Regal, you know, he's always into, he, he's going to be involved with this in some capacity too. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to agree with you. I do think Blackpool Combat Club, Santana Ortiz, and Eddie Kingston will pick up the win. But I'll say this. 
I think after the match, I don't think there's going to be much celebrating between the, the five some there. Because I do think Eddie Kingston and Brian Danielson, there's still a story to tell there. So There you go. There you go. And the AEW Women's Championship is on the line as your champion, your reigning defending champion, Thunder Rosa La Mara Mara, will defend against number one contender Serena D. And I think this is right up there with, I mentioned, Samoa Joe and Adam Cole. This is another one I think could steal the show. Uh, this is going to be Thunder Rosa's toughest test to date as AEW champion, women's champion. Um, Serena Deep, man, she's for real. Yep. Like, I mean, no that joke. feud with Sheeta, holy moly, she put a hurt on Sheeta. Yep. Um, and I just feel like Deep is probably at her all-time best. And you got to keep in mind, too, Serena Deep has defeated Thunder Rosa before. And she has ended a historic title reign for Thunder Rosa because Thunder Rosa was the NWA Women's Champion. Uh, and the person who stopped that reign was Serena Deeb. It's going to be a physical, physical war between these two women, these yeah. two warriors. I, I, yeah, I mean, I literally just can't wait to see this one. But there's no way I'm betting against Thunder Rosa. No. There's no way. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say in a sense this is going to be like a coming out party for her, but... I think she's going to get heck of over Yeah. after this. Well, I hope so, too, because I feel like, as much as I love Thunder Rosa, I feel like ever since she's won the title, it's like just kind of been like, okay, she's got the title, so we don't need to do anything with her until she needs to defend it. Yeah, uh, I would but agree. But it's, once again, that's the problem you run into when you have a huge roster like you do in AEW. So, so hopefully Thunder Rosa... Um, we'll get some more kind of uh, screen time. And there's a lot of females out there that can easily challenge for that championship belt. Easily. So, I, but I'm like you, man. I think Thunder Rosa is just a no brainer. Thunder Rosa wins all the way. But I, I mean, it will be, it will be a heck of a match. And it'll be a tough one, a tough test, but I would, the I heart, think, the heart of Thunder yeah. Rosa is what will prevail. I feel like I would love, to see Thunder Rosa make Serena tap. Oh, that'd be cool. I think that. I that think that, I cool. think that's ultimate storytelling. Yeah, that would be interesting. Because she's I, the, a taste of her own medicine. A professor will. of a thousand holds, or yeah, yeah. I and think Rosa beats her with one of her holds. Yep. Yep. It's going to be a classic, nonetheless. And of course, let's talk about the main event. Of double or nothing, your AEW World Championship match as CM Punk will get his shot to win the AEW title for the first time as he goes against Hangman Adam Page. Kind of nervous for this one, aren't you? Yeah, a little I bit. am too. I am too. Uh, the build on this one's been different from Punk's other matches, I feel yeah. like, but. I also feel like, too, it may, like, especially there on Dynamite with what they did now, it's like, I am so invested in this match, it's not even funny. And yeah. I think this match is going to be as great, and Hangman's had a great run as champion and great matches. I think this is his toughest test to date. The only thing that make it tougher on Hangman, if this was in Chicago, then, oh boy. But it's not in Chicago, we're in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, so. Yeah. I we're mean, on mutual grounds. But. I, I kind of, I, I've told you this already. Like, match hasn't even happened yet, and I think this will probably be a match of the year. I say it a lot, but it could be. It, it could be. Well, it could be. Well could be. You never know until you see like it. Like I say, it's like, definitely Hangman's toughest and biggest challenge to date, yeah. and that's not knocking anybody else he's went against because he's went against top tier talent like yeah. Brian Danielson, Adam Cole. Adam Cole. Lance Archer, sure. Kenny Omega, Maybe. the list goes on and yeah. on. But, man, uh, and I think a lot of people kind of expected, too, when CM Punk first came in, that he would automatically be the world champion. So Punk's been there for a good while now, over half a year, and has built up an impressive uh, amount of wins and worked up the rankings. And he, rightfully so, he should yes. be the number one contender. Um, I also kind of feel like, too, um, there was kind of a little bit of role reversals in the build up to this too, because yeah. you kind of like you really you have, and I still think to the end of the day you've got two baby faces going yeah. at it. This one's back and forth. You had Hangman Page 
was kind of there, the bad guy at first, it appeared like. Because uh, he's like, I'm not going to shake his hand or whatever, you know. Yeah. I just want to beat his ass. And then Punk kind of just throwing shade at Hangman. And I think this has been kind of a mind game thing with uh, Sam Hangman. Punk, the veteran, getting into Hangman's head. Because uh, Hangman's just like this gun ho, uh, you know. I've got to, I've got to be that fighting champion, you know. Yeah. And I feel like, and it's really explained a lot on this last promo from Dynamite, uh, that really Hangman's, it's about the title, yes, but it's about more so than that for Hangman. This is about defending AEW. It honor. is. It because is personal. It is personal because here you have, arguably, the biggest signing from AEW to this day, CM Punk, who signed with the company and joined them after AEW had been around for a couple years. So it's kind of like that age-old tale of, like, you've got the seasoned veteran against the guy who's been there from day one. Yeah. Um, and remember, Hangman Page, shoot, he was the guy who first, the first image ever of AEW, you know, he revealed mm -hmm. on that Being the Elite episode from so many years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, he... Hangman Page is as intertwined to AEW as it gets. And we all know and talked about his journey to get to the championship no, and his definitely. run here so far as AEW champion. Now, I will say this. If Hangman wins, he will have beaten Brian Danielson, Adam Cole, and CM Punk. Arguably the three biggest signings in AEW. Well, I'm going to tell you here, right here, right now, not if, when, when he, he wins. Because that's, I just feel like I've enjoyed this run so far. The odds are definitely stacked against Hangman, and I do feel like that Vegas crowd's going to be leaning slightly towards CM Punk. Uh, but I think it's going to be a very, it's going to be, when I say that, I would say maybe it's like 55 Punk, you know, 45 Hangman or something yeah. like that. You know, it's going to be close. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day... It's not a matter it's about if they love him or hate him. It's a matter about that getting that one, two, three in the ring. Yep. Heart of a champion. Yeah. I just I, I feel like if this, like if this was in Chicago, I think this would be a no brainer who would win. As much as I hate to say that, but yep. and it's not that I don't want Punk to win the title. I would like to see him win the championship at some point. But, Eventually. But but not, not now. Yet. Yeah, I I think this is a match where Hangman needs this win much more than Punk does. Yeah. I um, completely agree. And I think I would maybe even like to see at the end of it, you know. A handshake? Maybe Hangman does go out to shake his hand. And then I think maybe Punk just casually walks away. Well, yeah, blows it off or like. Who knows, man? Who knows? So who do you think is going to win this one? Hangman. Hangman all the way. There you go. It's got to be Hangman. Now, another thing I think you got to take in consideration we know it's near. Are we going to see anybody from New Japan Pro Wrestling show up at this show? I think you have to. You think so? Yeah. We already seen it happen on Wednesday night with the Empire's Great Ohan and Jeff Cobb showing up and interfering in that Ring of Honor tag team. Here's, here's my exact prediction. My exact prediction. One of them. I think... That main event time, into the match, Hangman wins, standing in the ring. Now, who I think comes out? Who's that? Could it could be any, just about anybody? But I feel I feel like you're gonna say Jay White, aren't you? No, huh? I have a gut feeling. This is okay. purely just a gut feeling. Can he? Not, I have no idea why. I think Will Ospreay comes out. Oh, interesting. I don't know why. Yeah, good. Boy, what a matchup that'd be. Will Ospreay and freaking Hangman Page. God, I, sign me up. Some, um, I don't think it'll be Okada. Yeah, I, I think, think Okada is still in Japan, so. Yeah, I don't think it'll be Okada. I think if you see Okada at Double or Nothing in any capacity, it's going to be like on a video or something, but who knows. But hey. That's for another time. That is purely the fun of this whole thing. Yes. Like, that's why. It's like fun because we're so excited for Double or Nothing, but we're also excited for what's the future yeah. that's coming. But 
We say it before on this channel, we'll say it again. What a time to be a professional wrestling fan. True story. Well, there you have it, folks. That is our double or nothing predictions. So we hope you enjoy double or nothing on pay-per-view. Because it's going to be one hell of a night. That's for sure. So I'm Jeremy, a.k.a. XLJLG. And I'm Mr. B. Roll. And always, please, if you don't mind, smash that like and subscribe button right here. Not the one over here or here, but this one right here. We'll see you next time. Enjoy Double or Nothing, everybody.